1984. It was a routine day at the UCIL factory in Bhopal. MIC was stored in the underground tank. The pipeline washing started at 9:30 p.m. as a routine maintenance operation. Between 10:30 and 11 p.m., workers engaged in the pipeline washing became aware of a leak. Little attention was paid considering it a normal leak. A casual attempt was made to trace the source of the leak, but of no use. The leak continued around 12:15 a.m. The pressure in the MIC tank rocketed up to 55 pounds per square inches. Water had began to leak into the tank E610 containing 42 tons of MIC. The resulting exothermic reaction increased the temperature inside the tank to over 200 degrees Celsius. An operator saw the concrete above the tank was cracking. About 12:30 a.m. The relief valve of the tank gave away and large quantities of MIC gas leaked into the atmosphere. The workers at the factory realized the risk of a massive disaster. They tried activating the safety systems available at the factory. There were three safety systems. First was the vent gas scrubber, which was considered the main line of defense. It was found that it wasn't in operational condition. Then the workers tried turning on the flare tower to burn off the toxic gas. This system was not in a working condition as the piece of pipeline leading to the tower had been removed for maintenance. The workers then tried transferring the MIC from the tank into a nearby spare tank. The gauge of the spare tank indicated that the tank already contained something. This gauge indicator was found defective later on after failure in all three safety systems the workers attempted to douse the leaking gas with a water spray the water spray reached a height of 100 feet from the ground while the leak was at 120 feet above the ground at 1 am the workers realized nothing could be done to stop the leak thousands of people living around the plant what a weekend by suffocating burning effects of the gas as on the three sides the ucil plant was surrounded by slums and other poor settlements the people living in these colonies were the worst sufferers there was no warning or guidance to the general public around this time there were two types of alarms in the factory one mild siren for the workers and one loud public siren The public siren was started only at about 2:30 a.m. and since the gas leaked from a 30 meter chimney it wasn't high enough for the people to escape their facts. It was not long before the entire city was enveloped by an invisible but extremely toxic gas. People of Bhopal began to feel the effects of toxin. People who were laying cozily inside the duvets a few minutes ago They now began to feel suffocation, cough, burning eyes and vomiting. Streets began crowded with people running here and there for help. The chaos went on through the night. Local hospitals were soon overwhelmed with the injured. A crisis further compounded by a lack of knowledge of exactly what gas was involved and what its effects were. Within hours, the streets of Bhopal were littered with human corpses and the carcasses of buffaloes, cows, dogs and birds. About 3000 people died immediately on that night. Another 8000 died in the next one week. Yet another 15 to 20000 people died over a longer period of time due to the effects of the poisonous gas. Still about half a million people were directly or indirectly affected with 38000 temporary partial and roughly 3900 permanently